Agatha already knows who Teen really is. And it seems like Rio Vidal is in the loop too, even though that sigil is still keeping the guy's true identity under wraps. Now, I totally get it. This might surprise some of you or even make you a bit annoyed. But honestly, since episode four, Teen's identity hasn't really been a secret. There's not much left to reveal, right? With those Funko Pop leaks floating around, I bet a lot of you have already pieced together that Teen is actually Billy, the son of Wanda Maximoff, AKA Scarlet Witch. And listen, I'm not trying to fight that idea. Let's find out. I was kind of hoping we'd see Nicholas Scratch show up just so we could explore Agatha Harkness's character a bit more. But if it turns out Teen is Billy, I can roll with that. What did you say? It's Agatha. Here's the real question though. If Agatha knows Teen is Billy, why is she acting all warm and fuzzy with him? You'd think with her history with Wanda, she'd see Billy as a threat. Shouldn't she hate him? This video is going to dig into that mystery. Whether this theory turns out to be right or wrong, I think it's gonna make the next few episodes way more thrilling to watch. But before we get into it, if you haven't subscribed yet, now's the perfect time. We talk all things MCU and break down popular movies every day here on Cinemamu. If you're into theories like this, you won't want to miss what's coming up next. All right, let's jump into the theory. Let's dive into a standout moment from episode four, where Agatha says to Teen, you don't have to know a person's name to know who they are. To me, this line is way more crucial than the witch trials and all that drama. Why? Because it hints at a significant shift in Agatha's character. She's not just the old witch we met in episode one, the one with a grudge and no powers. Nope, she's evolving into the Agatha we know from the comics, and it's fascinating to watch. If you're scratching your head about that, don't worry. I'll break it down for you in a bit. Since episode two, it's been clear that Agatha and Teen share this strong mother-son dynamic. Their playful banter is fun, but you can feel the deeper emotions simmering beneath the surface. Agatha has tried to pry into Teen's identity a few times, but that darn sigil keeps getting in her way. Now let's talk about Nicholas Scratch. That name has been popping up a lot in Agatha all along. I'm not saying Marvel is dropping tons of misleading clues, but honestly, it's made a lot of fans think we're gearing up to see Nicholas in this series. Agatha's backstory and her sadness all seem to lead us toward him. But here's the kicker. When Teen shows up at Agatha's door, she doesn't recognize him at all. And when Jennifer Kale tells Teen that Agatha wouldn't even recognize her own son if he knocked, that's a real gut punch, no doubt about it. Is anyone knows what happened to him? But that is what people say. That can't be true. Did you know she traded her own child for the Book of the Damned? Because of Jennifer's comment, many fans probably jumped to the conclusion that Teen is Nicholas Scratch. The mystery definitely points in that direction. And I'll admit, I was on that train for a bit too. Plus, Agatha's protective instincts toward Teen in episode three really stood out. I mean, she even told him he couldn't drink wine, something she clearly does for herself too. But when it comes to the other members of her coven, it's like, meh, whatever. Then everything shifted when Funko Pop dropped a figure of Wiccan, confirming that Billy is indeed part of Agatha all along. Honestly, that wasn't a huge surprise. Many of us had seen it coming since the trailer first dropped. At first, I thought this was just another misdirection designed to lead us astray and spark wild theories. But then we got another jaw dropper from Daniel RPK, who's known for his credible MCU scoops. He revealed that Marvel is cooking up a spinoff from Agatha all along. You'd think that's awesome news, right? But here's the catch. It's supposedly going to focus on finding Tommy, Billy's brother and Scarlet Witch's son. So the whole mystery of teen being Billy feels a bit less exciting now. I honestly don't know what other surprises Marvel could possibly have lined up for us in Agatha all along, especially with all these leaks swirling around. Okay, enough of my rambling. Let's get back to Agatha and teen. Here. 
So let's say the theory that Teen is actually Billy is spot on, and Agatha knows the truth. Given Agatha's grudge against Scarlet Witch from the end of WandaVision, it makes you wonder why she's acting so caring towards Teen. Shouldn't Billy be on her enemy list? I was really curious about this too, especially considering the heavy burden Agatha's carried over the last three years after Wanda took away her magic. So I dove into some clues and guess what I found? After reviewing a few comics, I think Agatha's behavior makes total sense. In fact, she should love Billy as if he were her own child. How does that work? Let me explain. In the comics, Agatha Harkness was never meant to be Wanda Maximoff's enemy. She's actually Wanda's mentor and one of her closest allies. Agatha played a crucial role in Wanda's journey to becoming the Scarlet Witch. Now, I know what you're thinking, but we clearly see Agatha as a villain in WandaVision. That's true, but how deep does that villainy go? Honestly, WandaVision is more about Wanda confronting her own grief and the mistakes she made in Westview than it is about a straightforward good versus evil battle. Agatha's arrival in Westview might have been driven by her desire to absorb Scarlet Witch's powers. I mean, she's known for being a witch who likes to siphon off the magic of others for her own gain. But in the MCU, this meeting with Wanda is pivotal. The show doesn't just focus on their confrontations in the final episodes, it also highlights the bond between Agatha, Wanda, and her family throughout the series. In fact, I think Agatha has a much bigger role in WandaVision than what we see on screen. There are still quite a few plot holes left unresolved. One big one is Wanda's rapid pregnancy. I don't buy that she could magically conceive Billy and Tommy all on her own, especially since Vision is clearly not the one involved here. And let's be real, Wanda didn't intend to get pregnant in the first place. Agatha's involvement in Wanda's pregnancy could be a way to weave herself into Wanda's family. And then there's the mystery of how quickly Billy and Tommy age. I suspect Agatha has a hand in that too. After they magically grow into 10-year-olds, they end up with Sparky, the adorable dog that Agatha uses in her schemes. I don't cast spells. No one taught me magic. Now, let's talk about the shocking arrival of Pietro Maximoff, Wanda's twin brother. This isn't just a surprise for Billy and Tommy, it's a jaw dropper for Wanda too. She never used her magic to bring Pietro back. So how does he suddenly show up on their doorstep, especially after his death in Avengers Age of Ultron? A lot of the crazy stuff happening in Westview likely wasn't just because of Wanda's powers. It seems like Agatha had a big hand in all of it. We even see her influencing a neighbor to wake Vision up to what Wanda's been doing. It's all right there on screen. You know what's even cooler? I've got a little something to share here. If you've watched Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, you probably caught on that Tommy and Billy exist in every universe, right? This totally crushes the theory that they're just illusions conjured up by Wanda's magic. Nope. These kids are real and pop up across the multiverse. They're not just products of Wanda's powers. This explains why Wanda is so desperate to reunite with her boys, even if it means throwing the multiverse into chaos. Because aside from being a mom in Earth 616, she's lived in a world where she's constantly faced with grief. Now, digging into the actual existence of Tommy and Billy is a long and complicated story. But in short, in the comics, they're like a fusion of Wanda's magic, Agatha's powers, and even a bit of Mephisto's soul. Since Agatha played a role in shaping Billy and Tommy, it makes perfect sense for her to feel a motherly affection for Billy. So how does all this play out in WandaVision? Since we only see what's on screen, we're left with theories. Personally, I think Agatha is the mastermind behind Wanda's pregnancy. She intentionally planted souls into Wanda's womb, leading to the births of Billy and Tommy. It's no wonder Wanda and Vision were so shocked by the pregnancy. And it doesn't stop there. Wanda Vision makes Earth 616 stand out in the multiverse. After watching Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, we learn that only in Earth 616 do Tommy and Billy have superpowers. In other universes, they're just normal kids. 
We see this when Wanda is taken to another universe by America Chavez, where Tommy and Billy don't fight back. They actually run away scared. I believe Agatha is also the one who influenced Billy and Tommy to develop those powers. Billy has powers similar to his mom, the Scarlet Witch, while Tommy can move at super speed, just like their late uncle Pietro. So how did Agatha pull all this off? The answer lies in the dark hole. Agatha has a copy of the Book of the Damned, which she uses to create all the craziness we see in WandaVision. Sure, the dark hold makes her dangerous, but it doesn't strip away Agatha's character as portrayed in Marvel Comics. There's actually a theory floating around that suggests Billy is an anchor being, meaning his existence impacts the existence of his universe. If an anchor being dies, so does their universe. We get a glimpse of this in Deadpool 3. According to this theory, Billy's soul already exists in Earth 616, but hasn't taken human form yet. It's Agatha who gets involved in this pregnancy and ultimately gives birth to Tommy and Billy. This theory could explain why Mephisto hasn't shown up yet. If this is true, Billy's role in the MCU could become super important moving forward. But I'm not ready to bet the farm on that theory just yet. Oh, and remember how I mentioned that Rio Vidal seems to know who Teen really is? Well, here's my theory. I suspect that Rio isn't just a green witch. She might actually be Death or Lady Death. You know, Death or Lady Death is this cosmic being with godlike powers. So as Lady Death, Rio would definitely have insights into these kinds of things, and she wouldn't be fooled by that sigil on Teen. This idea gets even more interesting with Rio's line to Agatha in episode four. That boy isn't yours. It's almost like she knows Teen isn't Nicholas Scratch and doesn't want Agatha to get too attached to him. Now, let's talk about what's intriguing at the end of Agatha all along. Besides the possible appearance of Mephisto, I really want to see how Marvel might position Agatha back as a mentor. Not for Wanda Maximoff this time, but for Billy. I mean, Billy definitely needs a strong mentor to help him fully embrace his role as Wiccan, right? So what do you think? Is Agatha fully aware of who Teen really is? Or do you have a different theory on this? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. And if you've got a bit more time, check out one of the videos on the end screen. We've got loads of exciting discussions about Agatha all along there, filled with mysteries and Easter eggs that are just as fun. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. By subscribing, you're helping this channel grow and improve even more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.